Hi everybody, Vsquarklehausen here and welcome to the tutorial to help you out with making your own cool textures for this, the 737 medium mainline jet. So what we're seeing right now in front of us is the medium mainline jet itself uh, in a nice blank white livery. This is the uh, directly from the texture template that I have released. You can find it in a link in the description along with the model file, the LOD, and all the other textures and normal maps and things. This model right here has it all applied. I'm viewing this in Autodesk Maya, which is a professional 3D software available for free if you are a student with a .edu email address. If not, other 3D modeling applications are available. They are, uh, some are free like Blender. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them to model, mostly because I haven't used them, but I know a lot of people do. So right here in Maya, you can see that this jet uh, looks pretty good. It's got the right normal map, it's got a good specular, and everything you might want for this. So how does this texture template work? When you open it up, the texture template probably will have, whoop, wrong thing, probably will have the guides loaded. I can't remember if I saved it uh, which way. But when I click this, I'm just going to refresh the texture, and right here, now you see the texture template with the guides. Now, this is an important step. You can see which parts of the airplane will have mirrored text or not. So everything that has red text is mirrored on the other side. This saves texture space and means that I don't have to texture and you don't have to texture both sides of the airplane individually. This green zone here, if we look at the side that has most of the text mirrored, this green area is a set of three little faces and those have been set up very carefully to make sure that text put over this area will show correctly on both sides of the plane. This is important. Uh, it's probably the single most important thing there could be with this project. Uh, so that means, basically, if I open up the model and view it in the side view, because things are mirrored on the other side, you can create as many swooshes and swipes and everything that you could want. Up the fuselage, up the tail, everything. It'll show perfectly right through the other side. But if you put text over here, it will be mirrored. So going back to our regular 3D view, just want to make sure that that's clear. That's very important because that will affect the way the entire livery works. I apologize if it's a little restrictive, but what this allowed me to do is make sure that it has a lot of nice texture resolution so everything can be nice and crisp, even though you can't put text there. So if we open up the texture template file, which is a .psd Photoshop document, you'll see something like this. It has this guides layer, which is the basically just the notes and the green outline that shows you where this should go. Uh, it also has this brightness and contrast thing turned off. Uh, I'd recommend turning this on before saving your texture. This is very important because the game really likes to brighten up all the textures to make things seem poppy. Uh, but what that does is with a white, with a white airplane, that'll really make your plane ugly, I guess. It'll make it really way too bright. You'll have the light grays and the whites washing out and uh, blasting to all the way full white and you'll lose a lot of the nice like subtle details that I have made easy and available for you. So if you look down into the folders here, I'll zoom in, you've got this export folder with above custom livery, place custom livery here, and below custom livery. This is a hopefully fairly straightforward. Below custom livery is like the base coat. Uh, it's the white paint, it's the metals, uh, etc. It's the fuselage and the wings. Above custom livery are the things like details, the windows, the panel lines, the doors, and everything. Everything should be set up very nicely, and the panel lines and things will react to the colors that you pick, and it all works very, very well. So, now to create your custom livery. I'm going to remove the, I'm going to hide at least, I'm not going to remove the above custom livery section. I'm going to remove it here, or hide it, just so we can see a little more clearly just the shapes we're going to be working with. If I, I'm going to keep the guides on for now, but I'm actually going to work below them in the Place Custom Livery here folder. Looking at the Below Custom Livery option, you want to keep that on just so you can see the rough outlines. Keep in mind the texture does cut in a little bit. It doesn't use this absolutely edge to edge. So make sure you don't use anything or have any designs really specifically that need stripes right at the edge. You'll want to inset them a little bit. If you're going to be doing a lot of really fine and like crazy detailed texture work, I highly recommend downloading Maya or Blender or some other 3D application that'll let you view and texture an object just so you can get nice fast refreshes. Like when I click, if I just save the template, if I turn this off and save the template so there's a difference, 
Then when I reload, you can see that now it's blank. It still has the normal map, normal map applied and everything, but you end up with a really quick and easy way to see differences on your texture. This is very important just to get quick and fast feedback. So I'm going to begin working on my texture here. I'm going to grab some text. I figure this one probably could be cool as some sort of B Squiggle has in private jet. So B S Q U I K L E H A U S E N. Uh, this did show up below the little guide here. So we can just move it. And it's very important that this stays within the guide. So I'm actually going to take a educated guess and turn the guides back on, but adjust their opacity to like 25%. That's nice. Now I can see both above and below. So that's good. I'm going to scale this up a little bit. I want it sitting just above the windows. Make sure it's in this green square. And for best results, if it's centered in the green square, it'll make sure it's centered on each side. Because the way this green area works is that it's just rotated 180 degrees to be the texture on the other side. So that looks good to me. I'm going to check that off. And now I want to do some cool stuff with the with a colored winglet, engine fairing, and tail, just to give a little bit of a design so it's not just plain white. So now this gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to turn the guides off and go to my magic wand tool. I want to select contiguous on and sample all layers. I'm going to click on the three areas that I want. Good, good, good. And back to place custom delivery. I'm going to make a new layer and paint bucket to fill them all in. Excellent. That's exactly what I want. Just to quickly test it, I'm going to save it up and refresh it here. Excellent. That's looking pretty sharp already. You can see the text shows correctly on both sides and the winglets, engines, and tail are dark. So what's a good private jet or a good plane at all without tail art? So what I have prepared earlier is just my little logo. I'm going to pull that in here, check it off, and now size it up onto the tail. That looks good. I want it overhanging a little bit. Just a cool style choice. You can save a step really easily by just making sure that the entire logo stays on the tail and doesn't overhang. Overhanging a little bit, like out here, would be okay, but you really want to make sure it doesn't overlap any of the other textures. That will look ugly. I'd like my, th my logo, personally, I'd like it to be quite large. So I'm going to check this off and put it here. Because I import it as another file, I'm just going to quickly rasterize it, which will let me edit. And now I'm going to turn off above, and I'm going to turn off that layer. I can then go back to my magic wand tool, select it. Now I'm going to invert my selection just to make it work and delete. So that just trimmed the edges off. And now when I turn above on, above custom delivery, when I turn that back on and unhide it, if I save it up, we can load it in Maya and beautiful. I've got my tail out. Now, usually don't do text on here. I can get away with the U because it's symmetrical. It works and looks good on each side. But if I had B Squirklehausen written here or anything that's not symmetrical, it will show up backwards on the other side of the tail. With that in mind, uh, we can just take a look at my other 737 liveries. We've got the Strict Toast Air one. That, of course, has the toaster livery on it. Uh, the text is in the right spot. And you can see here that it has a fairly complex sort of arc. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this unless you have a program like Maya where you can quickly iterate and check and make sure everything lines up. Uh, similarly to my plane, it also has these nice dark gray engines and winglets and things. Looking more at the San Monado one, this also has an arc. It actually has a little bit of detailing here on the engine fairing and a little bit on the winglet. Nice little spots. Keep in mind, these do show through, so text is not ideal. Looking at green air, they just have a straight stripe. It goes all the way through. That's a really easy one to do. You just need to measure it from the bottom of the texture, and it should hopefully line up. If you need any more help, you can use the panel lines as well. Those do line up between. Uh, they've got green and green, and a really neat kind of crazy texture on the tail. Again, though, no text. Look at the Skylines one. This has some larger text, but it is well within the guides, of course. Just very plain, and the swoosh is kept to a bit of a minimum, but they, I did go and carefully make sure it lines up on the tail and the back of the fuselage. CS, whoops, CS Airlines here, uh, same sort of thing. The livery does go a little bit onto the fuselage, though not that much. They have a nice design on the winglet as well. And the text, again, within that safe box. Transcon, same thing. Text is centered up within that box. A straight line. Just a very simple design. And this, much like mine, has that image, that the full circular image that's been cut off to fit the tail. 
Simair has the inscribed circle and otherwise it's just very plain, though it does have a really nice little oval here that I've got set up just to match and make everything look nice. So with those, I highly recommend using these as inspirations. I like using real airlines as inspirations as well. Unfortunately, with the texture template, you can't do everything, but there's a lot that you can do. So when it comes to saving it, just turn the brightness and contrast on, file, save as, and I got it here. I'm just going to do 737 underscore D. Now, this is important. Then you save it as a PNG. Right here, when I save it, it's going to overwrite an old file that I had, but saving it as 737 underscore D is actually quite important. Basically, what this will do is it'll tell the game what you want to have imported. So now you need to go and browse to a folder. I'm going to pull this whole folder back here. I luckily have a shortcut to it. So it's in your C drive. This is for Windows. I apologize. I don't know Mac. Uh, C drive, users, your username, app data, local, colossal order, cities underscore skylines, add-ons, import. This is a bit tricky. There is a shortcut to it in game that I'll show you later, but that's the import folder. So I'm just going to quickly browse to where I need to go. And you want to grab the 737.dae file, your 737 underscore D, your underscore I, underscore LOD, underscore N, and underscore S. You're going to copy these and paste them into your import folder. Now you grab Steam and you launch up your game. Okay, so here we are in Cities. I've launched it with no workshop. Uh, it just makes it a little bit faster, but unless you download my planes pack and actually store it locally, you're going to need to start it with the workshop enabled. Uh, my game's gotten pretty crashy in the editor, so I have to do this. So we're going to go to the asset editor here, which is editor's asset editor. We're going to click new. Select temperate. It actually doesn't really matter, but we select it and now we sit through a load screen. Okay, so here we are in the asset editor main menu. What you're going to want to do is select vehicle. This is important. We'll do prop later, but prop is actually a lot easier. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select public transport and whoa, I've got a bunch of stuff installed. Uh, so you can see there are a lot of workshop IDs and all sorts of things here, but I'm going to scroll until hopefully I can start seeing my airplanes. Luckily, I've named them all reasonably standard, I guess. Uh, here we go. They're below. So you see a lot of Sim Air, CS Airlines, Transcon, whatever. I'm going to look for this one, the Skylines Medium Mainline Jet. I like using the Skylines for these just because there's only one of them, uh, and you can be sure that it's a Medium Mainline Jet. I'm going to hit Continue. And then right here, here's that shortcut I was talking about. If you hit this little thing, it will pull up your import folder in your Explorer window. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it does. So now I can go down and select 737.dae and my game crashes. But I click 737.dae and if everything's imported properly, when I click continue, hey, there it is. So you can see here's my plane. We've got all these extra windows, which you really you won't need to worry about. All you're going to have is this one in the corner. Uh, and you really don't need to touch any of them. So you can see everything's working. We've got the normal maps. We've got the specular giving us some nice shine on the windows. The lights are all in the correct positions. If we go to nighttime, you can see that the lights light up here as well. And that's pretty much it, actually. Uh, everything's looking pretty nice. We've got the nice white fuselage. You can see because I saved it with the darker textures, even in the brightest kind of sun reflection spots on the fuselage, you can still see a lot of the, the stripes and the details and the, not stripes, sorry, the panel lines and things. These would wash out if you used the other option. So over here, you actually don't need to touch anything. Material though, just make 100% sure that these all exist white. Because we're not using a color texture, if these end up not white, it'll end up tinting the whole model, which just doesn't really look good tints the window color, it tints the, the metals that should stay bare, it tints stuff like the tires and things. And I mean, maybe if you really wanted to, you could do them grayscale, but I highly recommend just keeping it white. That'll keep it close to how you actually painted the texture. I'm liking the tail on this thing. Uh, the gradient is caused by the center line. Don't worry about that. It's actually okay. So what we're gonna do, everything's all set. You don't need to touch any of this. You hit escape, save asset, and save it, and name it main line. 
So that's about it. We're going to save it up. And now we're going to create our prop. Select new asset, prop, continue. And this is actually pretty easy, I guess. If you go here, you can browse through different props and things. And if you're subscribed to iPlanes Pack, you actually should have a prop in here just for something, just for all of my, for all of my assets. For now though, we're gonna grab something that we know is in this sort of bench menu and it really doesn't matter what. I'm gonna grab the high level spinning playground thing. What you do then, select the 737 and hit continue. And you'll notice there's a bit of a problem. Everything looks pretty good, but when we go to nighttime, you'll see that the windows are all glowing. So to fix this, we have to go back to our import folder. What you do is when you're doing the prop, you just delete the 737 underscore I. Now, when we say new asset prop and select the same random, uh, random uh, spinner, I guess. I'm doing this just because I know this is in the bench menu, which will help me later. Which template you choose does affect what you end up, uh, what menu it ends up being in. But with the deleted illumination menu, when we click continue, you'll see that the windows are dark as they should be. This plane's parked, it's off, etc. So that's about it. You go uh, prop general, I usually turn off create ruining. Uh, you can turn off color variations or just leave them all white. That's okay either way. And that's all. So you save this up. So I'm just gonna do BSQ medium mainline prop. Tooltip image and thumbnail icon, you can choose. The thumbnail icon does involve and matter the lighting when you imported the model. So if you keep it daytime, it'll make sure it's bright. I forgot, so it's a nighttime icon. I'm just gonna save it up real quick. You're gonna get a high triangle count warning. That's okay, it's not ideal, but it's fine for this because with airplanes, they're huge. So in any case, we're just gonna then quit the asset editor. I'm actually gonna quit the whole game and we load up our city and we can place these airplanes and we'll see them flying around. All right, so in any case, uh, we can just make sure they're in game by going to the asset or the advanced vehicle options and there it is. We're all good, so it exists as a plane. Oh, there it is. Look, right up near the front. Fantastic. So we can select it and here's our prop working very nicely if I do say so myself. And now we're just gonna wait and I will speed up time. <laughs> yeah, these look great. Nice little fleet here of private planes. But I'll speed up time until I find the correct jet landing. Just a quick aside, I'm gonna zoom way in over here because these are now using the LOD model, I believe. So this is another great aspect with the textures and the template I have set up. Uh, you can still read the U on the tail. It's just that that nice of a, uh, a setup and LOD model. Uh, so that's it. And here we go. So you can see right now, here it is. It's got passengers all set up. Everything's working perfectly. Let's just follow this for now. And we can get rid of all the UI and crap that we don't need. And as you can see, it matches all the rest of the planes perfectly well. It's exactly to scale and everything. And it's super easy to make because the model is already done. So that's about it. I'm going to keep sitting here looking at this airplane until it takes off and flies away. See other planes just like it are now spawning. And that's about it. So uh, have fun, actually. Uh, go crazy. You can really get some really cool liveries and paint jobs uh, with this texture and with this model. And that's it. So in any case, I'm gonna leave you with this beautiful takeoff shot here at what looks like the magic hour for the game as they fly directly to what appears to be outer space. Uh, so in any case, that's it. I'd like to thank you guys very much for watching and good luck on uh, your own your own airplanes. Thanks.